attorney, Mike Turpin. He is a former attorney general. He's been extremely involved in the victims' rights movement. In fact, he's been speaking all over the country, Butch, and, and doing a lot of public speaking, and we're happy to have you with us this morning. Hello, Mike. How are you? Good to see you. <clears throat> How did you get involved in victims' rights? Ben, my first job out of law school was police legal advisor at the Muskogee Police Department in Muskogee, Oklahoma. And I used to go to the scene of many crimes with the police officers there in Muskogee. And at the scene of a crime, the police officers would always read the Miranda warning that you've heard of. The Miranda warning, you have the right to remain silent, etc. They'd read the Miranda warning to somebody we just arrested for rape or robbery or murder. I always noticed that we never went over to a rape victim or a robbery victim or a couple that just had their farm burglarized. We never went over to them and said, by the way, we'd like to read you your rights that you're entitled to by the laws of the state of Oklahoma. In, in effect, Ben, we stepped over the body of the crime victim to read all these rights to the suspect. And, and I believe then that the day had come when we should balance the scales of justice and put some laws on the books for victims of crime. And that's when I first became involved, and that's about 1974, to be exact, many years ago at this point. And you developed a Victim's <clears throat> Bill of Rights. Tell us about that. Yes, Ben, when I became president of the District Attorney's Association, when I was later District Attorney in Muskogee County, the DAs here in this state, we all worked together working with the legislature to pass a Victim Bill of Rights by law. We carved into the law here in the state of Oklahoma a list of rights for victims of crime in about 1981. The legislature was very responsive, the governor was responsive, and uh, we now have laws on the books in Oklahoma called the Victim's Bill of Rights, including victim compensation, and that means we now reimburse innocent victims of violent crime for their out-of-pocket expenses. Now, do the taxpayers pay for that? Incredibly enough, uh, Ben, uh, Oklahoma's creative in the fact that we created a victim compensation fund that reimburses victims of crime in Oklahoma at no cost to the taxpayers. We have convicted criminals paying into the victim compensation fund, and we use that money to reimburse victims of crime. Now, a community can also be a victim of crime. Uh, a good example of that was the Edmund Massacre. I, I think it's fair to say that uh, August 20th, 1986, was a tragic day for many of us in Oklahoma. I was Attorney General of the State of Oklahoma the morning that I heard that we had 14 people murdered in Edmond, and uh, I called at that time the National Organization of Victim Assistance, and they sent in a community response team, a community crisis response team. They sent in some experts, mental health experts from all over the country to help the people there in Edmond cope with that tragedy. Y you're right, Ben, it used to be the conventional wisdom was that a victim was an individual that's been raped, robbed, murdered, or whatever. We learned at Edmond that a, a whole community can have the very soul of the community scarred to a certain extent, that they can be a victim as well. And all the co-workers at the post office were victims to a certain extent. All the ambulance drivers, all the police officers, all these people were traumatized to a certain extent. And we were pleased that NOVA, the National Organization of Victim Assistance, sent in this team of people to help administer emotional first aid, if you will. And since then, that prototype has now been used all over the country since uh, the Edmund Post Office massacre. So we turned something very tragic there into something very positive for the rest of America. And as recent as the, the tragedy in Kentucky with the 27 people on the school bus, we sent a community crisis response team to that state as well to help those victims and to help that community. And that whole concept was created in Edmund when that tragedy happened in 1986. Okay. Well, Mike, thank you very much for joining us this morning. You did a very good job. And tell Susan we said hello. I'll do that. Uh, as far as 1990 is concerned, uh, no interest at all in getting into the gubernatorial race? Oh, no, Ben. I'm out of politics. I, I mean, I really, really am. I am an attorney now right over here on the Broadway Extension, and I help people with very specific problems as opposed to advocating for the masses now. Those were good years in my life. I'm, I'm pleased that I got to serve this state as their attorney general. It was the greatest honor in my whole life. But now I'm just a lawyer and a uh, if you guys ever need any help, you know, call me. Well, Butch, Butch certainly could use one. Yeah. Sure, I always could. Butch needs a psychiatrist, not a lawyer, for getting up there on that the wing. The thing about him uh, not wanting to get into politics, he'd be taking a big cut in paying out since he's got oh, offices yeah. in o Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Well, <laughs> it's I'm true and you know it. <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. We'll be back with the top news stories of the day. And